What is going on ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Prodigy and welcome to another video on the channel. Today guys we're going to be talking about Kingdom Hearts 3 and the main Numora interview from the Ultimania. So it's been a while since I've done my last Ultimania video talking about the starting piece of this interview and it's been quite a while since I done that video and I'm just now doing the continuation of it and the reason for that is because I just recently got a brand new computer and I'm so happy because now I'm going to be able to stream a lot more make videos a lot faster it's overall just going to be a lovely experience for me and I'm going to be pumping out content a lot faster than I feel like I already do but with that out of the way though I know a lot of you have been waiting for this so let's get right into the video Nimora today is going to be talking about Pixar worlds or Disney worlds in general and Kingdom Hearts 3 plus some other things as well. After Kingdom Hearts 2 was released, Pixar was purchased by Disney. Did this expand the range of worlds available for you to include in this title? Which Nomura responds, actually we did make a few trial models of characters from Monsters Inc. and Toy Story during the production of Kingdom Hearts 2 and we did begin negotiations to have them appear in the game. We did have to shelve them in the end but I felt I I couldn't make Kingdom Hearts 3 without including Pixar work, so I started up negotiations again, and this time the situation between Disney and Pixar had changed, and we were able to make it happen. After we had finished deciding all the worlds for this game, Disney and Pixar kept releasing fascinating titles. I found myself wishing over and over again that we could have included this and that. Okay, so Kingdom Hearts 3... Numora really wanted Pixar Worlds in the game, and that makes me so happy, and probably a lot of you as well, because that means that since Numora was this ambitious about, like, getting Pixar Worlds in Kingdom Hearts 3, even more ambitious than is even presented in this, as we read later on, it means that Pixar Worlds are definitely going to be, like, an occurring thing in the Kingdom Hearts series from now on, and I can't wait for movies like Inside Out to possibly appear, movies like Coco to appear, Pixar honestly just has a very unique way of storytelling and their art styles are very unique as well like Inside Out and Kingdom Hearts I don't know exactly how that would work but I really feel like that world could be amazing in Kingdom Hearts because that's personally one of my favorite movies ever Inside Out but the fact that he just said that I found myself wishing over and over again that we could have included this and that it means that he probably has a lot on the table for us regarding worlds in the Kingdom Hearts series I really wonder if um, he's going to save some of the big worlds like Coco, Moana, Inside Out. I don't know how big Inside Out is, but movies like those, I wonder if he's going to save those worlds for the number titles or if he's going to just do whatever he wants and throw whatever is like current and big at the time in the next title. It's very interesting what direction they might go. But okay, actually, wait, before we continue, um, side note about the Monsters, Inc. and Toy Story models being in Kingdom Hearts 2, that was actually something that was found out about like years ago. I don't exactly remember what the Monsters, Inc. models look like, but I remember that there were models for Woody and Buzz summons, I'd assume, in Kingdom Hearts 2. They've been out for years now. Now. And honestly, if you've been around the Kingdom Hearts YouTube space or even just on social media in the Kingdom Hearts community, you've known about these. But for those of you that don't know, um, here are the images of them on screen right now. But yeah, that is some really cool. So it wasn't just some weird fake thing someone came up with all that time ago, even though we knew it wasn't fake. It's still cool that Numora like acknowledged that. So including Monsters Inc. and Toy Story in Kingdom Hearts 3 were highest in priority for you. Even so, the hurdles we had to jump to get there were higher than I had expected. To begin with, I went to America twice for negotiations, where it turned out that we couldn't move forward with that until we had a plot. So I wrote the plot of Toy Box at a stage where the main story still hadn't been written. After that, we were in correspondence for quite a long time, until the plans were boiled down into something they finally approved. It was the first time we had worked with Pixar, and we built a relationship with them 
them through Toy Story, which we would use as a base when suggesting other titles. That's another cool thing right there. Nomura went through a lot, it seems, to get Pixar Worlds and Kingdom Hearts 3. It really is, like, cool because I know there's this weird misconception in the Kingdom Hearts community that Nomura doesn't care about the Disney worlds or anything. For me personally, I care about the Disney side of Kingdom Hearts as much as I care about everything else. Like, the same way some people feel about Final Fantasy characters in Kingdom Hearts, that's how I feel about Disney. Kingdom Hearts without Disney is, like... Not really Kingdom Hearts to me. It's, like, different. Of course, we have our main story moments like The World That Never Was and Driver's Town that have very minimal Disney in them. But even there, like, Donald, Goofy, Mickey, they're all, like, a part of the story. Like, they're even in those worlds as well. Like, even the Kingdom Hearts story themes, like the theme of the heart, the whole friendship is my power thing, a lot of those, like, story elements are very Disney-like. So, like, even the main Kingdom Hearts like storytelling the convoluted stuff like even that is definitely heavily inspired off of like some of the Disney movies we grew up with so Disney is just like littered throughout Kingdom Hearts like all over the place so it's really nice to see that Demora is as ambitious about getting these titles in his game as like some of us fans are getting excited for them you know I don't know it's just really cool and the thing about him like already having the plot for Toy Box written before the main story story was written is really interesting. I definitely think Toy Box in terms of like storytelling was one of the more authentic worlds in Kingdom Hearts 3. All of them of course felt like very authentic and were very very good versions of their movies except for <coughs> Frozen. But Toy Box was definitely one of the worlds that Story-wise, definitely was like a cut above some of the rest. And it felt so authentic because I can actually see this Toy Story characters in like a situation like that. And apparently it's canon to the movies as well, which I don't, I don't know how that works. We definitely didn't get no Kingdom Hearts reference in Toy Story 4. But anywho, we were surprised at how the plot of the Pixar worlds were continuations of the original movies. Originally, the basic pattern of the Kingdom Hearts series was that Sora and the others get involved in scenes that depict the happenings of the original films. The Tangled and Frozen worlds fit that description. However, with Toy Story and Monsters, Inc., upon request from the creators, we went with the pattern of depicting a period set after the movie as an authorized history, which is their corporate way of saying it's canon. Which pattern a world would follow depended greatly on the ideas of the creators and producers of the movies. So Disney definitely had quite a big hand in Kingdom Hearts this time around. Compared to before where of course they had a hand in it because it's their properties, but this time around it seems like they were more involved in like the stories of it a little bit, which Sounds pretty interesting to me. The stories based on the events of the original movies still managed to cleverly incorporate episodes involving Sora and his friends, didn't they? That is the achievement of you can read the name here because I do not want to mispronounce it. Of the scenario plus cutscene director for Kingdom Hearts and the level design team, the team that creates enemy positioning and the shape of the maps in recent Kingdom Hearts titles. Oka has been discussing and deciding the location and flow of battles and cuts scenes with the level design team and creating tentative scenarios that fit. I touch things up in the final stages, but what I correct is mostly to do a dialogue. The events of the story of each world mostly prioritize level design. That's a cool little neat detail about like the way they incorporate the cutscenes into the actual worlds, you know? Actual world stories is what I mean. But anyways, continuing with the last question of this section of the interview, Disney has now acquired companies other than Pixar. Oh, I know people are going to be interested in this, such as Marvel and Lucasfilm, and now Fox. Will this expand the range of worlds available for future games? Yes. Okay. However, the contracts necessary to use a franchise in a game are each tied to their own separate companies, and in several several cases, there are existing contracts with other game companies. So it's not as simple as the company has been acquired by Disney so it can appear in Kingdom Hearts. I'm kind of glad he clarified that, sorry to interrupt the reading of his response, but I'm glad he clarified that because I'm not gonna lie, a lot of people kind of did think that way, me included in some instances, because that does make a lot of sense that it is still tied down, even though they're owned by Disney, it's still tied down to those select companies. Like you can't just 
just like put a Marvel world in Kingdom Hearts without talking to, you know, Marvel. You'd have to go through Disney, but you have to talk to Marvel as well. But anyways, continuing, we were only able to use a single cut of Mickey in Kingdom Hearts 1 for a similar reason. Another game company was releasing a Mickey game around the same time, so they told us we couldn't use him at all. But I was persistent, and I ended up receiving an idea for a compromise. You can use him if it's just one cut and it's just his silhouette and he's just waving from far away or something. I deliberated over how to make the very most of that one chance and the result is that appearance of his in Kingdom Hearts 1 which is one of the best cutscenes in Kingdom Hearts. Like that cutscene I feel like that was like everyone's first like emotional moment or it was one of their first emotional moments experiencing the Kingdom Hearts series because seeing Mickey like that was just so cool man like Mickey was a champion in that scene and the music that was playing Riku and Sora closing the door I don't know man I'm just reminiscing that scene was so good <laughs> But it's crazy how Nomura was only able to use a silhouette of Mickey and it was just him like waving from far away or something. In this Kingdom Hearts case, him holding a keyblade and saying, now Sora, let's close this door for good. I do a terrible Mickey voice, I'm sorry. But still, it's crazy how Nomura is that creative of a person that he used that scene to its fullest potential like i honestly can't think of a better way to utilize something like that with the restrictions they gave him and just having it come out like that great and i'm so grateful that they were able to use mickey like later on in the kingdom Hearts series as well but guys that's going to do it for today's interview we learned a lot about the process of getting pixar worlds and dealing with disney worlds and kingdom hearts 3 and he even talked a little bit about like the marvel and lucas films worlds and he did say at the start yes when he was asked will this expand the range of worlds available for future games we technically have a marvel world and Kingdom Hearts because Big Hero 6 originated from Marvel, but Big Hero 6, like the movie, is completely different from whatever Big Hero 6 was before. The Big Hero 6 movie you all are aware of from Kingdom Hearts 3 and of course the movie that was released in like 2014, I think, 2013, somewhere around there. That is a very, very, very Disney-fied version of whatever Big Hero 6 was before. So even though it is Marvel, it's not Marvel, if you know what I mean. It's not like the things we think about when we think of Marvel. When most people think of Marvel, they think of the Avengers. They think of the X-Men. Think of Spider-Man. Not many people think of Big Hero 6. When you think of Disney, you think of Big Hero 6. But when you think of Marvel, there's a lot of other things that come to your mind first. But like I said, though, that's going to do it for today's video. If you enjoyed, leave a like, share the video with a friend or family member, and last but not least, if you have not already and want to become a part of the union all you have to do is hit that red little subscribe button down below i have a lot more interviews coming for you guys soon i believe there's two more videos that are going to be coming about this interview specifically but until then though like i said leave a like share the video and subscribe my name is prodigy and i will talk to you guys soon peace out